we'll do a fly over here so you get a layout of how I set up our little property here. This little property here that I'm showing you is one acre in size. It abuts against my property, my home property. And if you look straight ahead there, we're in our home property there. You can see my roof line of my house. This goes behind my three neighbors also. The property is about 365 feet long and 120 feet deep. And we'll fly over a little different angle here. On the bottom, you can see the compost, chicken coop, the IVC tote on my shop. Coming up to the uh, scaled down animal barn here. Now we're walking along the front of the property here. Got the orchard there. Now to my right hand side is my actual my, my lawn property. Coming into the goat yard and the turkeys. We have it fenced off here between the goat and the berry patch yard. My dog saw it's called a dog yard. There's the pole barn equipment shed. Those big doors there, you can build those in place by yourself. My large gate access. And I'll swing around here. You're looking down towards the big garden down there. And there's my tiny house. Again, the front of the equipment shed. And looking back. To Here's a close-up of the pole barred equipment shed. You can see the big doors on the front. I'll have a lit video link for both of these projects. The shed and how to build the big doors in place. You can do that all by yourself. As we swing around the back here, you can see the water barrels gang together. I collect the water off this equipment shed, and then it's used for the berry patch in the back. And we're just going to continue walking around the equipment shed here. And here you can see a demonstration of the big doors. And just a quick look inside the equipment shed. Here's how I divert the water from the gutters. Another close-up here of the ganged water barrels. Here I'm hooking up a Ryobi 18-volt uh, water pump. This is their hybrid water pump. You can plug this into AC or you can use the Ryobi batteries. Turning the valve on. Just turn the water pump on, yep. and here we have it hooked to a hose and a water wand, and I'm able to water the berries. 
This whole patch can be watered from these gang water barrels. Another close-up of the diverter system here. And how I gang barrels together. Here's another water collection I have on my uh, shop. Same type of diverter. But here I'm collecting the water in a 275-gallon IBC tote. This is the water I use for the animals. And here's a shot of the front of the shop. And another 275-gallon IBC tote, same type of diverter. And here's a water cart that was made for me. It's a 30 gallon tank on there. It runs off a 20 volt DeWalt battery. And an on demand water pump. It's got its own hose and its own wand. Here's one of the easy gates. These gates are made out of decking lumber, pressure treated decking lumber. And these are five years old now, and they've held up really well. Going through another one of those gates. Here's a scaled down barn. It's got a loft. Do have a solar panel here and a battery inside just to run some lights. There goes a baby bunny. Yeah. See it running there? Okay, we're on the back porch of the barn now. Let's take a walk inside the back door of the barn. Here's where I store the feed. I have a milking stand over there. That works really great for trimming the goat's hooves. Walk up the stairs into the loft. Again, these videos will be linked below. I'll have them labeled, of course. Here I'm walking into the center rooms and I'm walking towards the front of the barn now. Now I'm into one of their bedding areas and the other side, the other bedding area with a hay rack in the corner. My electric fence charger is mounted up there on the wall. And I'm back out the front doors here. And walking in over to this other little room, that's where I store the baled hay. I don't have the doors full because I wanted air circulation. The turkeys decided to come in the back door, it looks like. Jump down. There you go. Come on. Let's go. And I'm heading out the back door. Lost a turkey. He decided to go up in the loft. He's up in the loft. 
or she's up in the loft. I think it's a Come she. Come on, get out of there. Come on, guys, get out get of here. One. Okay, we're out the back door of the goat barn now. We're heading back towards the hay feeder. The goats really love this hay feeder. It's covered, it's sheltered from the weather. That cover is hinged. Again, a link below for this video on this build. That's just made with a part of a cattle panel. There's a view of another one of those gates that leads into the orchard area. There are 12 trees in that orchard. There's four pears, four peaches, and four apple trees. Here's the chicken coop. The chicken coop is divided into two parts. Two thirds of the coop is actually the coop. One third is the feed storage area. I have a door within a door here. Take a look inside. There's the nesting boxes, the roosts. I have low roost on the back wall and high roost on the across the top there. Most of the time they use the high roosts. The door within the door keeps the goats out. Swinging around the back side of the chicken coop. Here's the exterior nesting boxes. You don't have to go inside the coop. You can just gather the eggs from the outside. Oh, one of the girls is in there laying an egg. Just pulling back here. Oh, there's the uh, water collection for the chickens. This is another type of diverter you can get. I'll leave a link to the diverter types that I'm using. This is just a 55 gallon rain barrel. And this is the back door of the coop. This is opposite the other door. And it's one third of the area and you can look on inside here, just where I store the chicken related items and the chicken feed. Here's my tiny house. Here I'm taking a close up of the uh, chimney. We'll have a video of the chimney install. Metal roofing. Everybody should know how to apply metal roofing. So I have a video on that link below. We'll take a walk inside the tiny house. Here's the wood stove. And I'll pan up to the support box going out the upper the roof here this is in the bathroom area of the tiny house this is my little solar setup here the tiny house is a 12 volt house it's all wired for 12 volt appliances and here's the uh, dining here's the kitchen area into the living area of the tiny house 12 volt lights, 12 volt sockets here. My neighbor's dog, Lila. She's quite a character. The compost area. I would say we easily do 
50 to 60 yards of compost a year. My neighbor's horse and all the neighbors put their grass clippings in here, garden materials. And I use a little tractor to always turn it, keep it turned every couple days. The compost area probably supplies at least half the food for the chickens. So in combination with free ranging and the compost, they're probably getting 70 to 75% of their food and I'll supplement with chicken layer feed for the rest of their needs. Well, all the links will be below in the description. Hope you'll check them out. Have a great day. Bye-bye.